Hey, welcome. I hope you're doing well. Today I want to take a few minutes to tell you about these. What are these? Moving averages. What are moving averages? Trend indicators that can allow you to create simple but efficient trading strategies. I want to tell you a story about them so you're sure to understand the fundamentals. I will tell you how they're constructed, show you how they behave, and I will discuss some limitations that they can have. I will finish by giving you some examples of how they can be used in a trading strategy. Enjoy. Moving averages are trend indicators. There are about four families of indicators, trend, momentum, volatility, and volume. So moving averages are there to help you understand where the price of an asset is going. And how does it do that? It does that by smoothing out price data. You will often see that moving averages are lagging indicators. What I mean by that is that they seem like they're often one step too late in predicting the price of an asset. But be careful about this. This is not said in a bad way. It is virtually impossible to predict the future value of an asset and moving averages are not used for that. They are basically tools to help you understand the trend of an asset. Moving averages are also sometimes used to find regions of support and resistance for an asset. But this is something I will not get into today. One of the key features of moving averages is that they're based on past data. In other words, the computation of a moving average always boils down to a function of your asset price taken at different times in the past. In addition to this, to compute a moving averages, you will also have to choose a period. For example, you can define a daily moving average, a monthly moving average, an hourly moving average, etc. This also means that it constantly updates. For example, the one day moving average of my asset now is not the same that it was a day before or even a day before than that. And it will not be the same tomorrow, etc. We will get into that in more details in a moment. Essentially, the functions that takes into account the prices of your asset in the past depends on the type of moving average. And there are many types of moving averages. For example, the most well-known ones are the simple moving average, the exponential moving average, and we will look into these in more details in a bit and discuss more complicated ones towards the end. The key idea with moving averages is that when you look at short-term moving averages, that is to say when the period over which your averaging is small, then you will have an indicator that responds quickly to the changes of the price. This also means that it will be more sensitive to the noise of your asset value. In other words, it will be more sensitive to the high frequency volatility in the price. In opposition, long-term moving averages are slower to react to changes in the asset value and therefore it captures better the smoother underlying trend of your asset. Let's understand better what I mean by looking at a chart. And we will hop on to TradingView for that. Let me search for Bitcoin as an example. So I type BTC and I will go on the Binance exchange. Now I'm not sure what chart you'll get to when you arrive on this page, but let's work with the daily chart for this example. There are two ways to add an indicator. Either you click here or you could simply right click on the chart and add indicator. I will type 3MA and click on the first one. Let's change the settings together. I want to just discuss one for, for the moment. So I'll hide the other two. And this will be a SMA, a simple moving average. I will talk about the details of that in a minute. Let's take it as an example for now. So let me put a very small period of averaging. Let's say two periods. So that would mean an average over two days because we're working with a daily chart. Let me change the style so we can see things better. I'll go for a nice golden color and thicker lines. There we go. So let me zoom in. So you can see that with a tiny amount of averaging, it really follows the price of the asset. 
Let's now add another one, but that has a larger averaging period. Let's say instead of two days, let's go for 20 days. Let me unhind it and also, and also change the style. Let's make it a nice purple and thicker as well. And there we go. You can see that on the contrary this time, the moving average that has a larger averaging period is less sensitive to the, all the ups and downs in the asset price but rather captures more of an underlying evolution, if you want. Now, having seen this, what I want to mention is that really the key feature in building trading strategies with moving averages is from the comparison of short-term averages and long-term averages. And we will get into that a bit later. But before that, let's look into some examples of moving averages. The first one, I've already mentioned it, is the simple moving average. As its name suggests, it's the simplest moving average that you can think of. And that is because it's simply the arithmetic mean of a given time period. As you can see here, to compute a simple moving average, what you do is to add the price of your asset several times in the past, and you divide by the total number of periods that you've considered. Let me give you an example so you understand better. Say that we want to compute the three-day simple moving average of an asset today at 10 a.m. How do we do that? Well, the first thing is to write down the price of the asset today at 10 a.m. To that number, you will then add the price of that asset yesterday at 10 a.m. And then you add the price of that asset two days before at 10 a.m. And finally, you divide by three because it's the three-day simple moving average. And there we go. We have computed the three-day simple moving average of an asset today. 10 a.m. Now, how would we do it if we wanted to compute the three-day simple moving average of the asset yesterday at 10 a.m.? Well, let me give you the answer because it's exactly the same thing, except that you start one step before. That is to say that you will start by the price of your asset yesterday at 10 a.m. and therefore go up to three days before. Now, don't worry, you won't have to do those computations yourself. You saw that you can use some chart software that will do that for you. And there exists tons of libraries that would allow you to do that on the internet. But I thought it was important to give you a practical example at least once, so you can really get a feeling of what you're dealing with. The simple moving average is really a milestone of trend indicators. Historically, what has been used a lot, and it is actually still today, is the 200 day simple moving average. What you'll often hear is that if the price of an asset is above its 200 day simple moving average, you can conclude that the price is undergoing an uptrend, or in other words, a bull trend. And on the other hand, if the price is below the 200 day simple moving average, the asset is undergoing a downtrend, or in other words, a bear trend. One critics that is often given to simple moving average is that they could rely too much on outdated data. And that is why different types of moving averages have been invented. And one of these is, for example, the exponential moving average. This is now a weighted average. And what happens is that it gives more importance to recent prices. And thanks to that, it has less lag with respect to the simple moving average. To compute it, you have to go through a recursive process. You can see that the exponential moving average of an asset at a given time will depend on the exponential moving average at the time before. You might ask me then, how do you do with the one the furthest back in the past? Well, in that case, you will have to use a simple moving average. What's important to note as well in this formula is the appearance of this K, which is the weighting factor. And this is what gives more importance to recent prices. So you might say, well, I don't see any exponential here. Why is it called an exponential moving average? Well, it is k that follows a decreasing exponential as a function of the total number of periods. Let me give you an example of this weighting factor. Say that we want to compute the weighting factor of the 20 day exponential moving average so that it is equal to two divided by 20 plus one, and that gives you a weighting factor of around 9.5%. And so we compare that to the 100 day weighting factor. Well, in that case, it will be equal to 2%, which is therefore much smaller than the 20 day weighting factor. 
this shows you that exponential moving averages computed for smaller periods give much more importance to recent prices than larger ones. But there's also a caveat that comes with that. You will hear some people say that giving weight to recent dates can create some biases, which will give you more false alarms when you're trading. Let's have a look now on TradingView how exponential moving averages and simple moving averages compare. Okay, let me now change. We will say that the first one is a 10 day simple moving average, but the second one is a 10 day exponential moving average. Let's zoom in so we can see things a bit better. You can observe here, for example, that the exponential moving average, the purple one, is closer to the price and it has therefore reduced the lag that the simple moving average has. And therefore you can also see why we say that the exponential moving average captures better recent prices. You can see here that the purple curve was more sensitive to this upper peak, while here it was more sensitive to, its, to this lower peak. Let's talk about strategies now. So you might be getting a feeling that what can be important in a training strategy is the crossing of moving averages. In general terms, what you would expect is that if a shorter term average goes above a longer term average, then an uptrend is generally going to follow and therefore it's a good time to buy. In a position where now the longer term average goes above the short term average, then you can generally expect a downtrend to happen and therefore it's a good time to sell. Let's see if we can work this out on TradingView. I've set up an example here where I'm using a 10 day exponential moving average, the golden one, and a 30 day exponential moving average, the purple one. And let's focus on this part of the chart. The signal to buy would have happened around here because that's when the shorter term moving average went above the longer term moving average. And the sell would have happened then where the opposite happened. Let me mention that this kind of crossing is sometimes referred to as a golden crossing, while this one is sometimes referred to as a death crossing. Let's have a look at what this trade would have given us. So we would have bought at this point and then come here and sold at this point, around a 20% gain. Now you must know that no trading strategy is always perfect and I must give you an example of a losing trade. We have one right here. So the signal to buy would have happened around there and the signal to sell would have happened around here. And that would have been around 11% uh, loss. This is something normal. This will always happen in trading strategies. You have winning trades and losing ones. But what is important when you design a trading strategy is to make sure that the winning trades way overcome the losing ones. Okay, I think it's time to conclude now. The first thing I want to mention is that simple moving averages and exponential moving averages are something that are still used a lot, but they're generally better suited for long time frames. What I mean is that if you're looking for a high frequency trading strategy, well, simple moving averages and exponential moving averages are probably not your best choice. For that, you could look into other types of weights on the moving average. For example, the linearly weighted moving average or the double exponential moving average. Now the indicator that's quite popular is the MACD, etc. Another indicator that is based on moving averages and that I would like to mention to you is the Kaufman's adaptive moving average. This is an indicator that is better suited when the market is in a consolidation phase. That is to say when the price of an asset is basically moving horizontally with the, its volatility. What happens in this case is that generally simple moving average and exponential moving averages will tend to give you more false alarms. And that is what the KAMA tries to palliate for. A critics that can be given to moving averages in general is that if you believe the market to be efficient, that is to say that all this information is contained in its current state, then the past carries no information about the future. And in that case, moving averages rely too much on outdated data. This is really up to you to decide how you feel about this. I think the take home message that I want to give you, given all that we've discussed today, is that a good trading strategy with moving average 
probably arises from coupling moving averages with other indicators. For example, you could use many moving averages, and that's what we typically refer to as ribbons, or simply couple them with other indicators, for example, a momentum indicator, etc. Okay, this was Louis at Robot Traders. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it will be helpful for you in the future. If you have enjoyed, please consider giving us a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments, thoughts or questions, please feel free to drop them down below, but also join our community Discord. You can also come check us out on Twitter. You will find all this information in the description down below. Until next time, take care.